and there were ugly scenes at the West Brom Wolves FA Cup match yesterday when the game was suspended due to serious crowd trouble. Well, fighting erupted close to the area in the stands that's reserved for the play players' families. Missiles were thrown by both sets of fans. Well, host of the West Brom podcast, The Liquidator, Adrian Goldberg, was sat in that section where most of the trouble was yesterday and joins us now. Adrian, just explain to us, from your perspective, you go to the match with your daughter. When do you realise things are going really quite wrong? Early in the second half, I heard a bit of a commotion and I normally sit behind the goal, but when my nine-year-old daughter comes with me, we actually sit in this particular stand precisely because it is less crowded and less likely to have bother in it than any other part of the stadium. But in a stadium, you become aware of a commotion. What we have to be clear to explain here is that what happened wasn't really a fight between large numbers of rival hooligans. It was one or maybe two Wolves fans who had got into, quotes, the wrong section of the stadium. They bought tickets in the home section. And then a small Adrian. number of Albion fans initially tried getting at them. And then a larger number of Albion fans, including supporters in another stand, then poured onto the pitch once they became aware of what was going on to try and get at them as well. So those Wolves fans should not have been in there. They'll have known they should not have been in there. By the same token, those West Bromwich Albion fans were, I think, acting completely wrongly, stupidly, dangerously by streaming onto the pitch to try and get at them. But it wasn't a big fight between rival groups of fans. It was one or two Wolves supporters in the wrong section and Albion fans trying to get at them. But obviously very distressing for people who were not interested in getting at the Wolves fans and who just wanted to enjoy a ferociously competitive but safe Black Country derby. Yeah, I mean, we, we heard one of the players and the manager uh, describe the scenes as distressing. How was your daughter? Was she worried at all? She didn't quite realise what was going on. This is her first season of going down regularly. She couldn't quite understand why the match wasn't continuing. There were people standing up all around us and she just sat down. But I was well aware, as somebody who's a, a veteran of quite a few football hooligan incidents and matches over the years. So I was more concerned for her safety than she was. But having seen some of these incidents and seen sometimes how they can get out of control. I just wanted to leave the stadium at that point. And I've gone to the Albion for many, many years and I've very rarely seen incidents like this, almost never inside the stadium, certainly not since the, hopefully, we'd hope, the, the long forgotten days of, of football hooliganism in, in the 1980s. And it was just a horrible reminder of those days. And it's not something I really want to see back in football stadiums and it is something that will make me think about whether I take my daughter to games in future. Well that's what I was going to ask you, you know, do you want to bring a nine-year-old into that into that sort of atmosphere that was so so heated Adrian from your sort of eyewitness account actually two people in the wrong place caused that level of, of dissent you know that's a, a real problem that it can't be that fans can't come in, into contact with each other without seeing that sort of violence. No, and I think it's one of the saddest features of football that tribalism gives football an edge, I suppose. That's part of what makes it exciting. And going to football gives us a great family bond. This is really important. It's something we love doing together. The idea to me that somebody is sitting next to you and happens to have a, a top on with a different colour to yours, they happen to support a local club, even if they're a different local club, I cannot understand the mentality mm. that makes somebody then want to hit that person, that makes them want to attack that person. I think that's completely wrong. And in my view, West Bromwich Albion supporters, my own supporters, were completely out of order. You had people streaming down from a stand adjacent to our stand, running onto the pitch, which is illegal, to try and get at these Wolves supporters. Now, there have been one or two suggestions that the Wolves supporter, or as I say, there may have been a couple of them, had behaved inappropriately in relation to a West Bromwich Albion player's wife, because this is an area where the player's family sit. I have no idea of that, and I was only sitting about 20 seats away. From, from what was going on. So how the people who were coming from another stand could have known what 
these people were alleged to have mm. done. I have no idea. What, what needs was, to happen, Adrian? What, what should happen yeah. as a result of this violence yesterday? Well, I certainly think that anybody who encroached onto the pitch, they had no business being there, should be banned by West Bromwich Albion for a good lengthy period, perhaps mm. for, for five years, and should not be allowed into the stadium. Mm. Adrian, thank you so much. It's been fascinating to hear sort of firsthand how that all how that all played out. What, what did, just very quickly, uh, on the way home with your daughter, what kind of conversations did you have? What did you say to her? <laughs> well, I tried explaining as best I could uh, what had happened, but really, you know, we wanted to talk about happier things and not talk about the football, which yeah. is very sad for me because I love football and I love the Albion. Yeah, I'm sure take her to another match in I the I love future. my daughter more, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's good clarification, Adrian. Thank you so much.